Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is Tuesday, January the 22nd, 2019. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, Manny Pacquiao, 40 years old, still has it. He delivered for us. Did not get the knockout. We're not in the penthouse. But he did win the fight and you did win that part of the bet. Let me just say he was simply too fast. Simply too fast. Simply too strong for Adrian Broner. Right? You saw the left hand landing. You saw Broner badly hurt at times. You saw later in the fight, Broner decide that he could not stay in the pocket. So I believe by about the start of the ninth round, Broner is in survival mode, just like he was against Mikey Garcia. Right? Broner, though, this fight, he comes in, he looks like he's trying early. The problem is he just doesn't have the legs of Manny Pacquiao. He just doesn't. You'll also notice too that Broner isn't Floyd Mayweather, right? I know there was this idea early in Broner's career that he was about billions, right? That he was the new Mayweather, right? It kind of reminds you of Kobe Bryant taking the number 24, right? As if he's the new number 23, Michael Jordan. Well, not quite so. It's not that easy to be an all-time great. In the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight, you'll notice that Pacquiao always has to be mindful of Mayweather's left hook. Right, Mayweather's left hook, the same punch that he takes Ricky Hatton out with, the same punch that he takes Diego Corrales out with, Mayweather's left hook kept opponents honest. They understood it was what I call here trigger. Very fast. Right, they understood that Mayweather could lead with the punch. They understood that even though Mayweather had a right hand, that left hook could drop them. Diego Corrales' father got so tired of seeing his son getting battered by it that he threw in the towel. And understand, his son was unbeaten at the time. Now you notice Manny Pacquiao against Adrian Broner isn't worried about Broner's left hook. Broner has a slapping left hook, doesn't he? It doesn't carry the force of Mayweather's left hook. It's not sudden. It doesn't have as much ring coverage. In other words, Mayweather doesn't have to be that close to you to drop his left leg and get a left hook off. He just doesn't. Right, by the way, for those who've studied Mayweather, the brilliance of Mayweather is apparent in the Robert Guerrero fight when he fights the ghost. In that fight, Mayweather, who has a great left hook, relies on lead straight right hands. Right, Mayweather, defensive wizard, had many tools in his offensive arsenal. Well, understand, you take away the Mayweather left hook. And what you're left with when you're fighting Manny Pacquiao is an aggressive Manny Pacquiao who knows that when he gets away from the pocket, he has nothing to worry about. Right? Broner's entire construct, right? How he came up through the ranks is as an in-the-pocket fighter. Right? His legs, as I've said here online for years, are too wide apart. They don't allow him to move. Right? Understand, the best 
fighters, the best, in my opinion, can be offensive while they're moving. Right? Think about how Ali catches Sonny Liston in the rematch. Right? The guy who can hurt you when he's on the move is a dangerous man. It doesn't have to be moving back foot. Look at Mike Tyson's destruction of Marvis Fraser. Tyson literally comes in. Marvis is up on the rope sliding a little bit. Tyson moves with him. Tyson's throwing punches. Tyson can throw punches while moving his legs. Not so for Adrian Broner. Understand, Broner has two distinct gears. Right? Manny Pacquiao understood that offensive Broner, who he sees in the early part of this fight. And by the way, I'm using the word offensive loosely because Broner is too low volume. You want to know how bad Broner's volume is? In his corner late in the fight, I believe it's Kevin Cunningham, says to him, hey, you know, pretty much, player, my word, the movement looks good, <laughs> but you have to combine it with some punches. In other words, Broder, he's either in the pocket, offensive, legs wide apart, right? And he is gifted defensively in the pocket. He is, right? So he's either in the pocket, offensive, or he's on the move. And the problem is when he's on the move, he doesn't have any offense. So... The last few rounds of this fight, when I say Broner's just trying to make it to the goal line, go the distance in a fight, you know, Manny Pacquiao is never at risk. The last three rounds of this fight. Broner's moving a lot, but Broner's not throwing enough at Pacquiao to hurt him. Right? If Pacquiao had a watch, he would have, he would have been able to look at the watch while Broner was moving in front of him. Right? Broner couldn't marry the movement with offense. He's just not that guy. Right? Just not that guy. So I understand. Broner, after not throwing that many punches, after not hurting Manny Pacquiao, after getting hit with some bombs by Manny Pacquiao and barely making it out of a couple of the rounds. After running the last three rounds of the fight to survive. Right? Understand, Broner somehow thought that he was robbed in the fight. Now, I've long said online that these fighters have a lot of yes men around them, right? Guys whose jobs, whose mortgages, whose payment of their bills rely on the fighter, right? Boxing's an insular world. Let's hope there's someone on Broner's team who's gonna sit down and say to him, dude, your last few fights, you've looked way past your prime, right? The Mikey Garcia fight, folks, he's moving away from the pocket. He's in the same mode that he is late in the Pacquiao fight from almost the opening bell in the Mikey Garcia fight, right? You see him and you think, okay, when's he gonna stop moving and actually start fighting? Is this, is this a strategy to tire out Mikey Garcia? so that he can then show his real offense later? No, no, right? Broner couldn't stay in the pocket in exchange with Mikey Garcia. So he's moving away in that fight, right? You look at the Broner-Jesse Vargas fight, folks. Broner gets hit in the body so many times. 
that it's surprising. I mean, I, I consider Broner to be defensively blessed. He isn't in that fight. The reflexes have dimmed that much. In the Pacquiao fight, it's more of the same. Just look at the number of punches Broner lands every round. Right? This Broner is a shell of the Broner who beat Paulie Malignaggi years ago, who early on collected belts in multiple divisions. That Broner, as I said in the pre-fight video, no longer exists. Let me say this too. I know we're in an era where you're seeing some guys who have kept themselves in remarkable shape. Evander Holyfield fought well into his 40s. Uh, Vladimir Klitschko, in my opinion, is still a threat to the heavyweight crown. And he's in his 40s, right? Tom Brady this weekend in the NFL, you know, got his team again to the Super Bowl, right? Looked to me to be the best quarterback still playing. Right? I understand that Manny Pacquiao, you're seeing a 40-year-old, and he still has hand speed, and he still has legs. Right? He's, quite frankly, a better athlete than guys 15 years younger. Now, I'm not saying that keeping yourself in great shape and aging slowly uh, isn't possible. Right? I'm not saying that at all. Right? Alexander Usyk is one of the best athletes in the sport, in my opinion, and he, here's a secret, he's in his 30s. Right? But what I am definitely saying is that I want you to look at the careers of boxers in history. Understand there are other people other than Manny Pacquiao, Evander Holyfield, Vladimir Klitschko, who didn't quite keep themselves in shape, who yo-yoed in weight between fights who had to take time off from training to deal with legal matters and other issues, right? Marvin Hagler, who was always in shape, right? If you ever watched Marvin Hagler, you knew he was always in shape and he always looked angry, right? But understand, Marvin Hagler left the sport at 32. Look it up. People were shocked when Andre Ward left the sport. Right? Because Lord knows there's so many fights out there. There's so many young lions who want to prove themselves. Right? Who want to fight the best and they understood that unbeaten Andre Ward was a way to make their case. Right? Great fighter. But Andre Ward walked away and people were shocked. Understand, that's when most guys in the past have walked away, right? A lot of guys get out of their 20s and they realize, you know what? I don't have the reflexes I did at 21. You know what? That road work is really treacherous now. You know what? That elbow injury is just not going away. My bulky knee, that's an issue in every fight now, right? I look at Adrian Broner and I'm just telling you, and I know no one in public wants to say it because it's impolite, right? If you want access to Broner in his camp, you know, you don't get that by insulting people or by saying that someone is on a downward decline. But let's be real, you can revive a lot of things physically, but you cannot revive, in my opinion, your reflexes. A big part of boxing are your reflexes. Understand, in the 1960s, you could hardly hit Ali. He didn't even put a hand up, folks. People were throwing punches and he was just moving his head back. He was a leaner. Right? You would throw, he would lean, the punch would end here. His reflexes were that quick. You get to the 70s, and Ali is rope-a-doping. Not the same fighter. Legs, gone. Right, gone. Suddenly, in the middle of the 70s, we start talking about Ali's ability to take a punch. Folks, 
In the 1960s, they didn't even know whether he could take a punch. Guy hardly got hit. I'll agree, Sonny Banks puts him down. To the Henry Cooper crowd, yes, Henry Cooper puts him down. <laughs> right? I'll agree with that. He does hit the canvas in the 60s. There was the idea that he might not have a chip. Right? But understand, you didn't have him get hit hard enough. Where you were you know, looking at a fight and saying, oh my God, you know, think about how many times George Foreman hit Ali in the 70s. Think about Roy Jones Jr. Right? Believe it or not, there's a story going around that Ray Leonard, of all people, was interested in investing in fighters. So he went to see Roy Jones Jr. work out. And Roy apparently in that sparring session, if you believe the story, got caught, went down. Ray Leonard kept his money in his pocket, did not invest in Roy Jones, right? Well, understand, when Roy Jones ruled the roost, and don't kid yourself, uh, there's a certain mythology to Roy Jones that is similar to the Rocky Marciano mythology, where people say, oh, he didn't fight anyone, <laughs> right? Even though Marciano fights, Ezra Charles, Archie Moore, <laughs> Joe Lewis. I mean, who was he supposed to fight, right? Roy Jones goes through a stretch where he fights Mike McCallum, Virgil Hill, right? These were big names at the time. James Tony. And I'm just telling you, Roy Jones hardly ever got touched. The reflexes were that off the page. He even fought brawlers. Pazienza, Vinny Pazienza, guys who you knew were going to collapse the pocket, try to throw punches on him. You never saw Roy get hit, right? You get to Roy later, and my goodness, how many times did Antonio Tarver hit him? Right? The first fight, Roy is hit hard several times. The second fight, who? Roy's out. Right? Roy is out. Then Glenn Johnson gets a taste. Roy is out. Not TKO, KO. Right? Adrian Broner, folks, I believe the reflexes have damned. I know someone someplace is going to look at a calendar and say, he's too young for the reflexes to have damned. Are you kidding me? Boxing's a young man's sport. The reflexes dim on many fighters as they grow older. Many fighters. Right? Guys who were wizards suddenly start getting caught with shots. I saw a fight once. I'm just telling you, Felix Trinidad on his best day, in my opinion, would have no shot against Pernell Whitaker. Right? Too obvious. Too obvious. His offensive game, you knew what was coming. Quite frankly, if he doesn't go low, he should have lost to Alfaro's Fernando Vargas. One man's opinion. I know I'm going to hear about it in the comment section. But by the time they fought, Purnell, defensive wizard. Right? I believe if Oscar De La Hoya is cornered and De La Hoya has fought people like Floyd Mayweather, if you ask Oscar De La Hoya today who the best defensive fighter he fought was, I believe he's going to tell you it was Pernell Whitaker. Understand, Whitaker, though, by the time he fights Trinidad, the reflexes aren't there. Trinidad starts catching him. You're watching the film and you realize, gee, Pernell, who's still world class, is no longer Pernell Whitaker. Adrian Broner, let's face it, he struggled against Adrian Granados. Right? Let's face it, he's been struggling for a while. You got the feeling Mikey Garcia wanted a real fight. Had this guy running away from him the entire fight. I hope the boxing press approaches Mikey Garcia because if anybody knows, that Adrian Broner is no longer Adrian Broner, it's the guys who fought him recently. Jesse Vargas's hands are probably still sore 
from landing all the body shots he landed on Adrian Broner. Broner couldn't do anything with him. Broner couldn't match him on volume. Look at the CompuBox numbers. So understand, boxing is the entertainment business. Right? If you have a big name that sells, hey, it's all about the sales. It's prize fighting. The prize matters. Promoters want you because they want fans in the seats. They want people interested in the fight. Now that's very different than you actually having a chance to win the fight. Broner right now is a name. He's a name. And let's face it too, he's colorful. Right? You see Broner, he's a talker. The press conferences are interesting. Right? He's dissing the other guy. You're laughing along with the jokes. You say, you know what? I need to check out this fight. That's what the promoters want. That's why they're in the game, to sell you the fight. But Adrian Broner doesn't have the reflexes anymore to cope with a Manny Pacquiao. Frankly, at 147, the water's too deep. I believe he'd have a better shot at 154. Right? At least there, Arislandi Lara's low volume. Right? Tony Harrison's very patient. At 147, who's he going to be? Terrence Crawford? No. We already saw the fight against Mikey Garcia, didn't we? That's a no. Right? If you're not going to throw punches, if you aren't prepared to deal with a collapse the pocket onslaught, you're not going to be successful against Errol Spence. Right? Let's just say that Adrian Broner, to me, is in the twilight of his career. He's at the point where he gets beaten in a fight. He has to know that Manny Pacquiao is throwing most of the punches in the fight. He gets beaten in a fight, and he has to pretend that he won the fight. That he was robbed. Right? Has to pretend. And of course, nobody buys it. Understand, his corner is telling him, you need to throw more punches. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm guessing there are guys in Broner's camp who are loyal to Broner, who right now need to dodge interviewers. Because they don't want to talk about this fight, right? You don't want to lie to an interviewer and say, oh, yeah, I thought Broner won that fight. I thought we got robbed. You don't want to be the guy lying. Right? You also don't want to be the disloyal guy saying, oh, no, man, he beat, beat my guy badly. So you know what happens? You see the reporter from a mile away. You're, you're ducking in, in you know, rooms, right? You're like, oh, is there an open door over here? You know, the reporter comes over, you act like you have some place to go. Hey, player, I can't. Next time, next time, next time. Right? Broner's running out of next times. If he's in the ring against a guy who's going to make it an offensive shootout, a guy who has size, Errol Spence, or if he's in the ring with a guy with more hand speed and volume, Manny Pacquiao, or a technician who can move. Understand, Terrence Crawford can hurt you while he's moving. Just look at the Victor Postal fight. Right? If Broner fights Crawford and they both start moving, Broner's offense is going to fall apart. Not Crawford's. Right? Let me say, too, there are some in the sport, Freddie Roach, Manny Pacquiao's trainer, who feels that Broner should lose weight to fight at 135 pounds. Folks, fighting Mikey Garcia at 140 didn't help him. I actually think Broner wants to think about gaining weight, one man's opinion, because I'm just telling you, some of these bigger guys at 154 are going to wrongly think that they could just push Broner around. 
right? Maybe being smaller in stature actually will help him at the higher weight. But one thing's clear. He didn't have the big power at 147. Right? He lost this fight to Manny Pacquiao, in my opinion, by several rounds. That's how I see it. Sorry, I don't know that. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.